heard a message about changing your perspective. Okay? And so, think about it. If God said, hey, I'm going to allow you to fully walk in your purpose. You're going to blow up as a business owner. Your YouTube channel is going to blow up. You, you'll have everything you ever dreamed on. But you have to give up everything about your old self and become a new person. All your old friends, if you, your boyfriend, got to go. That's whatever your habit may be. That gas, that's got to go too. Uh, your favorite cousins, those family members, they got to go too. You got to get rid of them too. Oh, sneaky links, sex. Mm. You got to give that up as well. And I did. I've been celibate. I lost everybody last year. Um, And what if he said that job? Oh, you know that job that you know you think makes you of so much value? That's got to go too. Oh, you know that house that you attach to have so much value to it and you think it makes you a value because you live in a certain place? Yeah, that's got to go too. So what if God said in order to get to where you want to be in life, you have to give up everything, everything. Would you still want to do it? I started thinking about all the people in the Bible. I started thinking about all the people in the Bible who was asked to do something crazy. <laughs> the first stories, build an ark and tell everybody. The world, the whole world about to be flooded, y'all. Y'all need, y'all got to get inside my boat. I'm building a big old boat. The whole world going to be flooded. That's how I sound to people when I say, hey, yeah, I'm being evicted. And God also told me to leave my job and pursue my business full time. What up, what up, what up, Rich Gang? Welcome or welcome back. For those who don't know me, I am Eris, and on my channel, I do weekly vlogs, and we focus on spiritual growth, mental health, physical health, and just growing and elevating as a person. So if you want to be a part of this community space, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and leave a comment, and drop your favorite color hearts <laughs> so other people can get the message and get whatever they need to receive out of my weekly vlogs because I'm always dropping gems. I'm always showing y'all what it's like. My whole purpose of this channel is basically to show y'all what it is like to have an authentic relationship with God. And I'm not talking about a religious relationship with God. I'm talking about a, an authentic relationship with God. So excuse that I got three Bs. I actually did my own hair. You see like this is my real hair, baby. Yeah. So I did my own hair and um, I just started with the beads, but I realized that I didn't have the right size. So I got to go to the store and get that. I know y'all can see by the title of this video that I am being evicted from my home. And I ain't never been evicted before in my life, baby. So um, this is a new one for me. Uh now for the last two weeks i've been highly depressed i still been pushing out weekly vlogs and content for y'all i still been doing what i'm supposed to be doing but um the devil been attacking me every which way he can and that's how i know that's how i know i'm going up so if you watched my last video my last youtube vlog i was talking about how god asked me to leave my job so for those who don't know i was an assistant working for a millionaire helping her run her million dollar skincare brand and as the assistant you know i'm doing like the the worky work <laughs> and all of that i'm seeing everything firsthand i'm doing i'm just you know doing everything being a part of the brand helping her build her million dollar brand like shawty makes 15k on a monday like it's nothing and so it was my dream job. I loved that job. Um, I had the perfect schedule because when you're a single mother, everything, Holy Spirit, speak through me through this entire video. None of me, all of you. And you have no real support system. 
you know, I, you have to find a job that works within the time frame of you picking up your children from school and taking them in the morning. Um, and so, yeah. Anyways, um, so he asked me to leave that job and start working for myself full time as a YouTuber and an entrepreneur. Y'all know I make my own hair growth products, Iris Essentials. I used to be at the flea market every weekend. I might be back at the flea, I don't know, but, um, uh, <laughs> okay, okay. The, um... The goal is to be a six-figure online business, like run my business online and be a YouTuber. And that is my dream, right? So I've been crying and crying and crying because the apartments that I live in now were once my dream home. Like I wanted to live here so bad. And for the first year of me living here, God had told me to work for myself and I was going to the flea market every weekend and making, you know, enough, just, just enough to pay my rent and be here. And he was like, I'll take care of you. Everybody was on my back. <laughs> how you going to work for yourself? How you, how you going to do this? How you going to do that? You need to get a real job. You can't work for yourself. And yet. Every month, you know, my bills were paid. Sometimes they were late, but baby, yeah, I was doing it. So then I found out that my next door neighbor <coughs> ran her own business as a millionaire. You know, I have a, had a millionaire living next door to me and I watched her go from hundreds of sales to thousands of orders and i was like i know she needs somebody to work for her lord i can still work for myself and i can work for her too and da 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 and so i was like god please like let me just get up under her let me just absorb some of her knowledge and then i will be able to do this for myself cha i got up under her and i was just so about her brand her brand her brand you know, my big whole thing was I work for a millionaire. Like, I work for a millionaire. I work for a millionaire. Mind you, working for her and my schedule was not even enough to pay my rent. But God was still like, I got you. Make sure you stay focused on your business, support her business, do her work, and, you know, still absorb, use the information that you learn from her and take it and apply to yourself. Um, Instead, I just became all about her brand you know i it just kind of my my brand kind of just you know i was like a big advocate for her brand or whatever and so god was like you know you were supposed to yes you were supposed to work for her yes you were supposed to get up under her let her rub off on you and everything like that but that is not where you are supposed to stay I gave you a vision and a goal and a plan and a dream over here. And that is where you are supposed to be. So I'm like, all right. I ignored it and I just started, you know, um, selling my products, um, trying to sell my products online. But I really wasn't being consistent or anything. I get a sale here. I get a sale there. But this past couple of months, I've been taking it really serious. And then the Lord had been nudging me that it was time for me to leave. Anyway, if you want to get into that full story, you're going to have to watch my last episode, vlog episode three, where I'm cooking the burrito tacos. It might have been episode four. And I'm telling y'all about the whole process and the confirmations I got as far as me leaving my job. So I'm like, Lord... Let, let me tell y'all something. I had gotten rental assistance. Um, Because, you know, like I said, my job with her did not pay enough for me to actually be living in here. But I was doing it. And God was providing for me. God been paying my bills. God has been paying my bills here the entire time I've been here, y'all. No cap. So, I remember... One time I was three months late on my rent here. 
do y'all know out of nowhere i was fasting i was fasting i was like i'm fasting for my rent you know god do everything on his time and not your time <laughs> because what the scriptures say the trying of your faith worketh patience so he tested my faith tested my face tested my face i'm like lord you said it was gonna be taking care of me while i was living here what's going on i'm three months late but um how about some rental assistance that I have applied for a, a year before? Email me out of the blue in the middle of my fast. <laughs> and um, I think it was the last day of my fast, actually. And they gave me $10,000. I got a video on this, too. $10,000, which was almost the, like the rest of my year paid up for my rent. And then... um the second time um again the next time they gave me five thousand dollars so um i'm working here i'm working here i'm starting to feel like this is not where i'm supposed to be anymore like i'm starting to fall into depression it had been over a year of me working there and i'm like i'm god is like you doing something for someone else's business that you are supposed to be doing for yourself but I'm like, God, how you expect me to make it with everything? Like, my rent shot up $400 than what it was when I first started living here. If I don't have this job, they don't even pay me enough to be at that job. What do you expect me to do, God? And I know this is going to be a lengthy story, but y'all stay with me. So he was like, it's time for you to go. It's time for you to go. Like I said, you can watch the full last video while I'm making my burrito tacos and my vlog and see about that. So I put in my two weeks notice. In the middle of me, you know, having my last weeks, I got the eviction notice. So what's going on is I, I went and stood in line this time because this time they had it where you stand in line, be out there at 6 o'clock in the morning to get a ticket for your rental assistance. And I was like... All right, this will this will make it for the next three months. I'm like, at least I'll have the next three months of my rent paid while I'm full time content creating and going out giving out sample sets because that's what he told me to do. Go out and and make content about my business every day and go out there and um give out sample sets to the people around the different areas and you know just take my brand to the people. The so the rent office, the lady had a nasty attitude because when I stood in the line, I got my ticket. By the grace of God, I got my ticket because I stood out there the first day and they let all these people jump in front of us. Like when the, as soon as the door opened, people, family started hopping out their car, getting in front. And I went from being like number 26 to number 66. And it was supposed to be like the first 50 people. So I did not get a ticket. But the next day I went out there again, I got my ticket. And I was like, look at God, look at God. I got my ticket. I got approved. And you have to take with the paperwork that they give you back to your rental office. I go to my rental office for the with the paperwork, and it takes the lady, her name is Ashley, 30 minutes to fill out two papers because she did not want to fill out these papers for me. And, you know, she was making these slick comments. Her name is Ashley. <clears throat> And she was saying, like, you know, how people be abusing the system. And, you know, how I stand out there, too, if um, they were going to pay my mortgage and, she, mortgage. and she was trying to get me to run around. She was like, I'm going to call them, and I'm going to just email it to me. And the lady specifically told me, your landlord needs to fill out this paper and bring it back to me. And you bring it back to me. And then you will pay. Um, it'll be 30, 30 days. They'll put the three months rent. Pay it. On my landlord I've done this before I've got ten thousand and I've done this and I got five thousand dollars but I didn't have to wait in line for it it was just something that like I just filled out the paper form online and they just shot it back to me why this lady was still like she was like no I'm not gonna feel this out because um, I did this before one time and people was abusing the system and da 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 and she was just telling me you know stuff that ain't got nothing to do with me and so I'm like oh she like they mad that I keep getting this rental assistance. They're upset because I've been staying here and, you know, God been blessing me and paying my way. 
but I'm just thinking that I'm like, I'm like, whatever. She was being rude. She was being nasty to me. And the whole time I was just talking to her with kindness. I was just like killing her with kindness. Okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm just going to sit right here because like I said, the lady said, you know, I stood in line for this. I got my ticket. I, I did this two days in a row, you know. So, yeah. So what the rent office decided to do, because they know it takes 30 days for the um, payment to go ahead and process. They decided that they were going to hurry up and evict me before um before the money hit so they send my eviction notice and i'm like hey y'all know that i have three months rent on the way like why why are y'all sending me well yeah we're not gonna wait for no 30 days for the da -da 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 -da. and i'm like i've been here like three years three years and y'all have never acted like this but this is a whole new set of what you call it but they were around the last couple times that i got like my rent paid for me too and so she was like yeah um if you don't have your rent by the 17th um we're gonna I issue you an eviction so i'm like it's cool god got it because you know he just took care of me before i was three months late on the rent and boom ten thousand dollars plus i had already got approved so i'm like god not gonna let me get evicted and i went through all of that and got the approval so i went and got a lawyer because you can get a lawyer through alabama legal services still represents you you know if you're under a certain income range they'll represent you for free so the lawyer tells me uh, I talked to my lawyer about a couple days ago and he was like, um, hey, legally, because I thought it was illegal for them not to accept rent money and they owe you rent money and you owe them rent money, right? I'm like, this got to be illegal. If the government sends money for y'all to pay the rent that I owe y'all and y'all want the rent money, why wouldn't y'all take the rent money? So they was like, he was like, I just want you to know that it is perfectly legal for them not to accept your rent money from community action. That's who's paying it. And I'm like, what? And they have already decided that they are not going to accept your rental assistance and that they are going through and processing your eviction. Now, Mind you, prior to that, I reached out to Miss Summer. If I thought Ashley was rude, Miss Summer is the rudest person. I wish I could. Let me see if I pull these emails up. So I had emailed her like a, a few days after, a week after, and I would let her know like, hey, I had a very rude experience with the assistant manager, Miss Ashley. Um, I went in there and you can see on her wall, like on her wall, she has a paper that says, your poor planning is not my emergency. She had the worst attitude. She did not want to give me the paper. She kept giving me the runaround. Like she kept trying to tell me she was going to call them. She kept trying to tell me she was going to email them, but they never left her an email to email me. So like, I'm like, how are you going to email somebody that never left you an email? Like I'm peeping that she trying to find a way for me not to get the assistance. And she was just um, making comments about people abusing the system and things to, you know. Why did the lady Summer email me back and she said, she wasn't rude to you. She wasn't rude to you at all. And I was like, huh? I was like, Miss Summer, how are you going to tell me about my experience and you weren't over there? She was like, um, because, you know, I heard some of it from the other room from, from across the hall. She was across the hall in her office and she was on a phone call. I literally didn't go in there with her because she was on a phone call most majority of the time. And so I was like, you know, you were not in there. The lady was rude. She did not want to give you the paperwork, da, 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 da. And she was like being very nasty about it and making certain comments that I was uncomfortable with, da, 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 da. And she was like, 
like I said, she wasn't rude. She didn't give you the run around because it only took you like one time, like one office visit. And it only took you like 30 to 40 minutes. Like it was a, a 30 minute. And I said, Miss Thummer, why do you think it took her 30 minutes to fill out? It was one sheet of paper. All she had to do was sign and put the amount of rent. That's all it was. She had to sign and put the amount of rent. And then the other paper was a already previously formed, filled out form. And so she was like, um, it took her, it only took her, like, it was only a 30 minute visit. If she was giving you the run around, it would have took you multiple times to have to come back. And I'm like, the fact that you're debating with me about, so I asked her like, why do you think it took her 30 minutes to fill out one piece of paper? Because she did not want to give it to me. Anyway, she was like, so she rushed me back and she was like, um, by the way, we're going to go ahead and go ahead with, through with your eviction. Um, go ahead and, um, send your eviction paperwork over to the, what you call it. And I was like, why y'all doing that when, you know, you've received your money, like, you know, you're going to get your money and you receive your money. She was like, we're just not going to wait. We're not going to wait, um, 30 days to get a rent payment. And I was like, you've waited three months before. Why? Like, what, what is so different about this time? that you don't want to accept this rental payment. And she was like, anything you have to say to me, please take it up on my lawyer. Um, and so that's how that went. And so she was like, um, let me, let me look at low, see if I can find the email. So I'm like, huh? I'm like, yo, the devil mad busy because we, a lot of things we put off on God and it be the devil. The devil attacking us every way he can because he sees what's next and what's coming through in your life. And he he trying to stop it. He trying to break you. He trying to mess up your relationship with God. He trying to distract you. It's all be distractions and it all be the devil. But I'm hip. So I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm still like in denial. I'm like, bro, I've literally been here like three years. God's been taking care of my rent. Um... I've been taking care of my rent. My rent has always came through. And I've never gotten evicted in my life. So, at this point, um, the MCA people doing my rental, uh, what you call it, they asked me, hey, can you um send us over a, a document that we need? And... I'm going to, so we could process your payment and get it sent over to them. So I send it to, uh, I send it to my um, landlord and I'm like, hey, they're asking for this document, da, 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 da. And she wrote me back and she was like, I'm not sending them over anything. This was summer. I'm not sending them over anything until you pay the lawyer fees for the eviction notice that we sent you which is like eight hundred dollars and may's rent and i was like miss summer the money that they are trying to send you would cover the lawyer fees may and june and part of july's rent if you send her the document she can what you call it she can send it to you and, and you can get your payment and she was like, no, anything you have to say to me, you can take it up with my lawyer. I've already told you that. This is exactly what this lady emailed me back. So I'm at this point, I'm like, Whew. Lord, these people like playing in my face right now. You told me you was going to take care of me here. Da, 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 da. So at this point, I stopped writing her because now I'm getting like, I'm getting real pissed off. <laughs> I'm like, why she, why they, why is these people at this rent office acting like I've done something to them? Like, y'all big mad at the fact that I keep getting blessed with assistance. And it's giving, you want to get us out of here. Because the maintenance man also told me about a story, a story of a girl that was here on Section 8. She found a way to get in here at Section 8 and they was just like harassing her and going back and forth and being nasty with her the whole time till she moved out. And I was like, hmm. Now, I wouldn't tell nobody here to go do nothing. 
crazy. Like, you know, look up Inverness Lakes, Mobile, of Alabama. And, you know, leave a review about maybe the disgusting behavior of Miss Summer and Miss Ashley who work here. Or you share your disgust with the... Um, with the apartment complex as a whole and them, you know, rudely treating their tenants. I wouldn't do anything like that. And I wouldn't tell y'all to do anything like that and use the hashtag here for heirs so they know that they came for the wrong person because I got family. I got internet family. My cousins, y'all are my cousins who stand behind me. Here for heirs and um, Miss Summer. And Miss Ashley in Vernon Lakes, Mobile, Alabama. But yeah, I would never tell y'all to do something like that. But at that point, I was almost like, bro, I'm finna get on TikTok and I'm finna tell everybody like how these people are treating me. And yeah, tell everybody to leave. At this point, I was like, I'm gonna take everybody's phone and I'm gonna leave a bad review. But I was like, no, nah, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. So yeah, <clears throat> not that I'm saying to do that, but if you would feel like it. Like anyway, so she does that and i'm like oh my god like they not gonna take this money so this is really all because of malicious intent this ain't got nothing to do with the money y'all maliciously want me and my kids to be homeless and so that's another thing i am not like one of them people who has their moms to go back and follow on like i could just go back to my mama's house my mom lives with me. She lives off of me. I take care of my mom. And everybody depends on me. I'm always, I have to take care of everybody. And I find a way to do it off of my little salary that I was making. And so that's why I'm fighting so hard about my own business. Because I don't want them to grow up. I don't want my children to grow up how I grew up. When I lived in Detroit, I grew up with rats my no you know i'm not trying to down my mother but my mom was a hoarder pretty much almost a hoarder when i moved here in mobile in high school we had bed bugs um she had a very lack and scarcity mindset she was super super cheap and i didn't been i done had fleas roaches rats you know, and I live, the best she's ever lived is because she's lived with me. She follows me wherever I go and she lives with me, through me, off of me. And having to take care of people who are toxic and people who, like, you know, I had to beg when I was little, like, there's nothing you can do about these bed bugs. Like, I would go out and sleep in my car. Like, how can you let us live like this? But, you know, that's why I'm going so hard about my business and my YouTube channel quick. Because I'm like, no. Okay, my phone had died while speaking on it. So, I'm taking it as a sign to just leave that alone and continue on with the story. Um, yeah, so, basically, the moral of the story, you know, not to bash my mom. Not bash my mom. I'm just letting y'all know how I grew up. Um, the moral of the story is, I don't have nowhere to go so i've been crying and crying and crying on top of that i'm getting a phone call that my step aunt died and my cousin died in the last week i've been over there consoling the mothers and it's just it's really i've been taking it hard because you know i have children and and i'm also a daughter and so that's just been taking it and i'm like what is going on like the devil is trying to attack me every which way he can um i just don't see the light at all so then i'm looking at it and i decided i heard a message about changing your perspective okay and so think about it if god said hey I'm going to allow you to fully walk in your purpose. You're going to blow up as a business owner. Your YouTube channel is going to blow up. You, you'll have everything you ever dreamed on. 
But you have to give up everything about your old self and become a new person. All your old friends, if you, my best friend, your best friend, they got to go. That happened to me in real life last year. Your boyfriend, got to go. Oh, um, we, drugs, whatever your habit may be, that gas, that's got to go too. Uh, your favorite cousins, those family members that really you play like they believe in you and they don't, they got to go too. You got to get rid of them too. Oh, sneaky links, sex, mm, you got to give that up as well. And I did. I've been celibate. I lost everybody last year. Um, and what if he said that job, oh, you know, that job that, you know, you think makes you of so much value, that's got to go too. Oh, you know, that house that you attach to have so much value to it and you think it makes you a value because you live in a certain place. Yeah, that's got to go too. So what if God said in order to get to where you want to be in life, you have to give up everything everything would you still want to do it your boyfriend your best friends your cousins and maybe even your mother oh and that control that you you want to have over your life you got to release that and give that control to me and follow whatever i do no matter how crazy it sounds no matter how everybody gonna be looking at you like you're an idiot or a fool yeah that that's got to go too so I'm looking at it now like, okay, I've lost my friends. I've lost my loved ones. I lost my boyfriends. I don't have no stinky links. I don't have sex. I didn't gave up weed. And I was like, you think God is going to reward my obedience? With not having nowhere to go, I may not know where I'm going, but I'm going somewhere. He's going to make a way. Just think about it. I started thinking about all the people in the Bible. I started thinking about all the people in the Bible who was asked to do something crazy. <laughs> the first story, one of the first stories, build an ark and tell everybody. The world, the whole world about to be flooded, y'all. Y'all need, y'all got to get inside my boat. I'm building a big old boat. The whole world going to be flooded. That's how I sound to people when I say, hey, yeah, I'm being evicted. And God also told me to leave my job and pursue my business full time. And pursue my YouTube. And make other people want to have a relationship with him. That's how they looking at me. Like I said, I'm about to build an ark. Because people don't really have a real relationship with God. They have a religion with God. Because when God tells you to step out into the unknown... And you lose everything and it looks, but I started looking at it like this. If I'm losing everything, that means I have nowhere to go but up. <laughs> I have nowhere to go but up from here. <laughs> then I started look, thinking about how God, you know, asked the disciples, Jesus asked the disciples to go feed what 20 12 000 people with five loaves of bread and five fish or however many it was do you know how to, they the disciples probably was tired of jesus <laughs> they're like oh man here we go bro jesus we only got five fish my uh i don't know if you i don't know if you noticed jesus but we got like five pieces of fish how how and you Jesus look at them like, how? Just go start handing the fish out. They went over there and next thing you know, they had enough fish to feed more than the amount of people that was already out there. More people started coming. So I have to look at myself. I'm no different from these people in the Bible. There's nothing different about me where I'm not going to have to. I heard a preacher say, everybody wants, um, what was it? It's not Jacob. 
dang, I forgot the dude's name. The man who had the coat of many colors and his um his brothers threw him away and tried to sell him off and everything. And the, the preacher said, I think it was Jacob. Jacob in the coat of many colors. He said, everybody wants Jacob's dream, but nobody wants Jacob's story. He became king. Well, close to king. He ruled over the whole kingdom and still had to serve the people who did him the most wrong in his life. That's just like, I, I told you I done lost everybody in my life. I've lost everyone. Um, When God is nudging on you to move people out of your life and you don't move them out of your life, he begins to show you who they really are and how they really feel about you. And it's gonna get worse and worse and he's gonna it's gonna keep being shown their true colors are keep getting shown to you like that's enough I, I don't need to see no more i'm good on you okay now imagine you know god stripping you of your old self you becoming a new person and when you become this new person he like hey them very same class people that did, did that year when you got drugged and uh <laughs> They made fun of you and kicked you down and abandoned you and did all these different stuff and was telling the whole world. you. Hey, now I need you to get them a seat at your table that I provided for you. I prepared the table for you in front of your enemies so you can sit your enemies at the table so they can see God. So they can see the God in you. Just imagine it. So here I am today evicted i have no idea where i'm going no job anymore i work for myself no idea where my next meal is gonna come from no idea of anything but i know that there's nowhere to go but up i know that god has a plan and i'm deciding to walk in that walk in trust walk into the unknown because the unknown is where everyone becomes who they truly are supposed to be and so that's what i want to leave y'all with today check out my next weekly vlog this was not really a weekly vlog but it was the same length as a weekly vlog so i just made it one of my weekly vlogs and stay tuned to see where god takes me after this because i don't know and if you want to support my hair products and you know shop my brand i do what i do know is these last 30 days because i have 30 days left here in my apartment complex i'm gonna make the most of it i'm going to walk around and i'm going to be a full-time youtuber and content creator and business owner and i'm going to get out here i've been making um sample sets i'm going to get out here and i'm going to give free samples of my products i'm gonna get out here and ask people to subscribe to my youtube channel i'm get out here and talk to the people i'm gonna make content about my products every day i'm going to drop my business um instagram so y'all can you know be a part of that i'm gonna drop my website if you want to shop and get you some i also got a video i think it was my second weekly vlog this is only like episode five of my weekly vlogs my second see y'all need to go catch up if you don't if you ain't caught up Go back to week one, catch up. Um, I show you me making the different products and everything. I have a hair growth oil. I have a growth spray that's really good for people who wear protective styles like this. Braids, if you have locks, oh my God, your locks will grow. This girl told me her hair grew three inches in one month using the growth spray on her locks. Like, I'm not playing. My products work. God gave me the vision. He gave me the materials. He gave me what I needed. And that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to live here my last 30 days and work on myself. And I'm going to, instead of acting like I don't have nowhere to go, I'm going to happily be packing my things up as if I'm moving into a bigger and better space. And that is what I'm going to be believing for. So, thank y'all for watching. I love y'all. Drop a comment, please, with the video. When you leave comments, it helps boost the video so other people can see. 
anyways yeah thank y'all so much by the way y'all i still am going to post my real weekly vlog on sunday y'all know i try to post every wednesday and sunday or wednesday or sunday every week look for my videos on wednesdays and sundays because for some reason um it's set where you can't hit the notification bell which is so weird but the more you comment on my videos the more it just pops up into your feed and it'll notify you that my videos are coming like that um because it's saying my channel says it's made for kids and it doesn't say that so that's something on youtube in that going on so wednesdays and sundays look forward to my um weekly vlogs and yeah i'm getting excited about where i'm going and not what i see now so that's the message for somebody get excited about where you're going and not where you are now god can do anything y'all see my next dream apartments on my vision board <laughs> for all i know in a month dim that right there can be my next apartments with god all things are possible so yeah, I'm done being sad. I'm done crying. I'm done letting the devil try to be down on me. No, baby, you got to pick another person. Pick somebody. Get somebody else to do it.